What is hatching, Tuggy Peeps? One man top coming at you today with our week two match of the WBE season three. And pay no attention to the jabroni behind the curtain. She's doing her chores so we can be ready to go to Pokemon North American Internationals, which is this weekend. So this Saturday, which is when this will be uploaded, we will already be there. So if you're going to be there, tweet out to Old Man Tup and let us know where. Maybe we'll meet up have lunch. But let's take a look at this match. Very excited for Pokenats this week. Very excited for this matchup versus GG7V. And let's take a look at what he brought this week. Of course, he has Mega Sceptile, which is the fastest thing on his team, and he has to have it. He's got that Rotom Ghost form, which is very good bring on him. He's got Victini, Scary Sauce, Doug Trio, the Trapper, uh, Drapion, which isn't as threatening as a lot of the rest of his team. And then he has Remix, the Ditto, who, which I'm... 100% certain is going to be a Scarf variant because he needs it to beat Charizard. But looking at his team, going into the lead matchup, we think, oh, we get Charizard, mega it up turn one. We don't have to worry about rocks as much. Uh, so that's where we're going to lead. The only thing that really doesn't want, we don't want lead against Charizard is a Mega Sceptile because it can kill us. In one shot with a dragon pulse so we are gonna see exactly what is going on with that and we're gonna dive into this matchup and see if we come out of week two with a victory over MV so like I said we're leading off with Charizard the only thing we don't want to see is Mega Sceptile and end up with a starter lead. And he's going to lead with that grass, which is exactly what he leads with. So no reason for him not to drop a Dragon Pulse or Dragon Claw or whatever he's rocking this against us. So we're going to go keys to the city predicting a Dragon type move. And he is just going to Mega Up and drop a Dragon type move on us. So it's just like, okay, that's no bueno. But luckily for us, keys to the city is immune to dragon type attacks he's gonna switch out here because i want to take dazzling gleam to the face he's gonna go into gg the remix uh which is just going to give him a really good idea of the set we have luckily for us we aren't running anything crazy so we just do foul play because that was our attacking move we didn't want to do anything else he's gonna switch out go into his Drapion, we are going to switch out and go into Dad Bod because there wasn't really anything that he could do to us at that point. We're minus attack nature, and he's just going to have to switch out. He's going to go into MV Create, go for the Will-O-Wisp there. I was so close to clicking Toxic because I thought he was going to change, and I should have, and he's going to go for a workup here. Which has me thinking he very well could be a stored power set. But we're just going to go for a Toxic because any damage on Victini is good damage. The good thing we know is that he uh, isn't Scarfed or Banded or Specs at this point. Because he's trying to set himself up. He's going to go for the Z-Move here. Which ends up being Z-Psychic we find out after the match. So that's relatively unfortunate for us. Back to back weeks, Rotom Wash Dad Bod is going to get hit straight in the face with Z Move. And with the plus one, that will be more than enough to one shot Dad Bod, which is extremely unfortunate. But we are starting to rack up damage on this Victini, but that does give us one less thing to switch into some of his other Mons. We're going to go into Nasty here because Shadow Balls are excellent. And we're going to pull a quick double here and go into Tyranitar. And we're going to do this to try and catch something on the switch. His Drapion is going to come out here. Drapion is not going to want to take an Earthquake from us to the face. And we're starting to rack up Sandstorm damage on just about everything on his team. And that is very good. He's going to go into Hacks Noob. 
which is his Rotom Wash, which is going to get switched in there. We do just go for the Stone Edge, which hits that thing super hard, which is excellent. Now, we don't want to get Will-O-Wisp here. So we are just going to go into Keys to the City because status effects really aren't going to be too terribly terrible against it. We do have leftovers to negate the Will-O-Wisp, and that is exactly what he did. Now we are going to switch out here, go right back out into our Tyranitar, and he's just going to Volt Switch. I didn't think he would go for a double Will-O-Wisp there with the one missing, and he would just want uh, pulled out, knowing what we had with the Foul Play option. He's going to switch into his Diglett here. And that's no good for us because we can't switch out. I do know that we can live an Earthquake at this range. Unless he's banded. And even then I think we should be able to take one. He does hit us. We go for a crunch on him. And a non bulk invested Doug Trio that should one shot. It doesn't quite kill. That's super unfortunate. We can't do anything to get away from him at this point. And he is just going to be able to uh, style points on us and hit us with a reversal. Not wanting to risk the fact that Earthquake might min, uh, max min roll him there. But he does switch moves, which lets us know he's not choice. So we can bring out our Roserade. He's just going to go right back out into Hack Snoob. And Hack Snoob is going to take a big old Leaf Storm to the face. It is going to connect is going to do so much damage and just take out the Rotom here. So that's really good for us because there goes his ground immunity. He is going to switch out into Mega Sceptile here. Uh, probably fairly confident in the fact we are locked. We're just going to go into keys to the city here. Uh, even if he drops a hidden power fire on us, we are especially defensive, so we will take that relatively well. And we should be able to take one, if not two more, depending on how the rules of damage go. He's going to drop another one on us. We should live that outside of a crit, and that does a ton of damage. We are just going to foul play here. We don't have a very good safe switch into this thing at this point, and that does a butt ton of damage. A full butt ton, not a small one. The full butt ton of damage. We're going to switch out here thinking that should he go for the Hidden Power Fire again, we should be able to live it and possibly take the Dragon Pulse afterwards. Just because Nasty has that wonderful special defense, naturally bulky. Now, he does go for the Gig Drain there. It does a ton of damage. We're going to go for a Shadow Ball. I really, really should have clicked the possible uh, substitute there. It wouldn't have ultimately mattered in the long run. But he's going to Dragon Pulse on the switch here, uh, really thinking we weren't going to go back into anything. That is going to hit us and be enough to take us out. Going to get the critical hit. Fairly, fairly confident that didn't matter at all. But we do have him at minus one special defense now, so we can just come in and uh, drop a hidden power ground uh, hidden power ground does so much damage across his team now that he has lost his rotom which was his immunity to it and that's such a ton of damage technician hp ground just muy bueno he's getting one to the speed demon now and that is his doug trio sacking it off to the hidden power ground and rose raid looking very very nice for us at this point now, he does bring out MV Create here. And I wasn't 100% certain here. I didn't think an HP ground would kill at this range. And Rose Raid is just way too important to lose right here. So we are going to go into Klefki to eat a Searing Shot. And that is exactly what happens. So Klefki is going to go down to the specially offensive Victini. Luckily for us, he didn't try setting up, and if he did, we could have uh, hit him with the Volt Switch. He's going to bring Sniped out here. I don't want to set up just yet, 
or do I? I don't remember. So many things have been going on since this match, especially prep for the weekend. Yeah, we just go for the Earthquake here because, like I said, Ground does such a good amount of damage across his team right now. But what we didn't want to do was set up the plus one, which would just allow his Ditto to come in and start whooping on things. But this does allow him to bring that Grass back out. So we are pivoting between Trogdor and Billy Idol here. Now, we switch out here knowing we can take a Dragon Pulse. Did the calcs, and unless he like super crits us, we're gonna survive this fairly comfortably. But the situation we're in right now is we have Charizard that if we set up with and he switches in, if we set up a Dragon Dance and he switches in his, ah, uh, his dude, what's his dude's name? Oh, shoot. If he switches in, his ditto, he'll be at plus one attack. Now granted, he'll have to lock himself into either Flare Blitz or Earthquake, which will almost 100% have to be Earthquake. And even if he locks himself into that, he can still pivot back out into this. Now I mean, Sludge Bomb is gonna be doing damage for damage for damage. But we have to either hope he misplays at this point because the way it's looking, his switch options are just far superior to ours but we want to bring roserade out here because like i said we know we can take a dragon pulse and we can sludge bob anything that comes in uh roserade v roserade sludge bombs are going to i can't take two he's gonna dragon pulse and maybe for that simple fact, I should have let Roserade stay out there. Um, MV Create is going to come in. It isn't going to take two Sludge Bombs. And like I said, Sludge Bomb does a huge amount of damage against the rest of his team. We're going to hit him real good there. The Poison is going to rack up. We're going to outspeed because we're Scarfed. Sludge Bomb going to get another kill here. So Roserade putting in the finest of work this match. But he's going to bring out Remix. Now, it is purely a speed tie at this point. But if he sludge bombs me, I can't... I won't survive one. As you can see right there, it does right around 50%. He's going to sludge bomb me. I'm not going to survive one, which is unfortunate. Like I said, maybe a slight misplay around the rest of the team. But he's going to Sludge Bomb here. We have to set up, or we just Earthquake. Like I said, had we set up at that point, all he has to do is switch out and then come back in and Earthquake us because there's no, we don't have room to do anything else. But, yeah. Maybe we could have played a little bit differently. But because we didn't set up, we're not faster than this, so we are going to lose 1-0 to MV this week. Now, maybe we could have played a little bit differently at the end there. Um, maybe I could have Dragon Danced and Roosted on the predicted Ditto switch out which would have put us at a range that maybe we could have lived in Earthquake. Uh, that was iffy at that point, but it is what it is. We lost 1-0 to uh, one of the finest Pokemon battlers on the planet, which is MV. So if you're not already following him, go check him out. He's doing fantastic, has a really scary team to play against in this format in the wbe so go check them out we start off the season 0 and 2 which isn't fantastic but played against some good battlers we had a really really good match this week which i'm 100 proud of uh being able to take mb to the limit but that was us this week guys let me know what you think in the comment section down below how could we maybe have played it slightly differently like i said let me know i'm all meant up i will catch you guys on the flip side, peace.